caption did this mm -hmm. morning, and uh, it's reportedly coming from the president. One zero three firms or hundred and three firms vie for Ghana Business Awards. Four stories on page twenty, and finally, Miss Universe Ghana twenty eighteen tomorrow. So that's what we have on the front page of the Daily Graphic this morning. Now let's take a look at the Ghanaian Times. The Ghanaian Times says, Busumu Kofi Annan laid to rest. President world leaders bid Kofi Annan farewell. That story is on page 32. And another one, in interesting headline here. It says, fake military officer nabbed for 25,000 Ghana City fraud. He was just 24 years old, a mm -hmm. uh, 24 year electrician. Um, was able to convince a restaurant manager that he was somehow a military officer and got some 25,000 Ghana cities out of it. I think wow. we're very creative people. We just need to wow. channel the creativity in the right the laws direction must and work. we will succeed. The laws of this country must work. Yeah. And I'm still insisting because uh, <laughs> this issue at Circle where the AMA tax force, they are forcing people to pick rubbish yeah. when you step on the, on the lawn and they force you to pick rubbish. I think is the, the highest form of illegality in the in the in the country. Yeah. But anyway, I'm sure once we have uh, our people listening, those in authority listening, correct things would be done. Yeah, Chifa. Okay, so now um, let's take a look at what we have on the front page of the Herald newspaper. The Herald newspaper says seven state agencies crushing men's gold, thousand two hundred workers to lose jobs. <laughs> interesting, very very interesting. Won't to me buy his expensive cars as Ashanti NPP communicators cry over economic hardship. There's a picture here of Chairman Won't to me. Now, no corruption at passport office, foreign ministry fires back. So, um, um, whether or not this is true, we, 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 you should, uh, you know, read the paper and, and get an opinion or form an opinion yourself. Big names emerge in ECG concession scam. That's what they have also on the front page of the Herald newspaper this morning. Now let's take a look at the custodian. The custodian says, world leaders bid farewell to Kofi Annan. So again, we are all bidding farewell to Kofi Annan. And floods kill five, destroys 1,105 acres of farmland in the northern region. That's really, mm. really sad. And um, you can read more about that on, on page two. May their, may their souls rest in peace. You brought renown to our country. Nana eulogizes Kofi Annan. That story is on page three. The Daily Statesman says PURC orders 10% reduction of water tariffs. We shall be taking a look at the story shortly. Also, Kofi Annan worked for humanity. President Ekufado. The four stories on page two of the statesman, the daily statesman. And finally, GRA gets tough on tax evaders. So that's mm -hmm. what is contained on the front page this morning of the daily statesman. Now let's take a look at the Chronicle. Chronicle says, technical varsity teachers on strike over single spine. And uh, I think this next headline is extremely petty. America, Europe, abandon Anan. Um, there's a picture here of Theresa May. And he's saying, they're saying he's, she's walking away from Kofi Annan's funeral. U.S. President Donald Trump not interested. It's just really silly. Mm -hmm. I, I think Kofi Annan deserves more than, more than, but it's fine. Uh, it's okay. That, that's the headline on the Chronicle. And it says, America, Europe abandoned Annan after sacrificing 40 years ensuring world peace. Okay. The Chronicle. Now, UN chief extols Kofi Annan. Uh, page six has a story, and I'm um, reading from the Informer newspaper. The Informer newspaper also says Ghanaians mount pressure on a minister, Sak Galamse, MMDCE. And mm. a full story is on page three. Yes, because um, um, this whole MMDC is allegedly involved in Galamse. Wow. So we will sack them. We are warning you if you are found, we will sack you. I think you should go beyond that. We will, have, we will make sure you're prosecuted. Yeah. I think that's yeah. very important. Putin Instead of we'll sack you, we'll sack you. You lose mm -hmm. your job, find illegality. I think it's not enough. Mm -hmm. NPP serial callers mad, bent communication gadgets and accuses minister of neglect. And paid four has that story in the informer. And finally, 
uh, of Ekufado's government hostility towards teacher unions, technical university teachers on indefinite strike. So that's what is also contained uh, on page five of the informal newspaper this morning. Now let's take a look at the Gold Street business. World Bank commends Ghana's fiscal improvement. That story is on page two. Consumer inflation increase in August due to CD depreciation. That story is on page four. And Ghana risks losing over a hundred million dollars under power compact. You can read up on that on page 12. EPA to track licenses of small scale Miners deploy web based registration system. That story is on page four. 1D1F gathers momentum in two regions as 46 projects receive approvals. That story is on page two. And finally, PURC penalizes Ghana Water Company Limited orders repayment of over 14 million Ghana cities to customers. That story is on page two of the Gold Street business. I'm not undermining the Auditor General. This is coming from the board chairman, and I'm reading from citynewsroom.com. That's our online portal. Um, I'm not undermining the Auditor General. This is coming from the board chairman. And also, a uh, bauxite deal, old-fashioned model of exporting raw materials coming from Dr. Graham and you should uh, check the website for more on that story. Government has no strategy to deal with China or has no strategy on dealing with China is coming from Lloyd Amwa. And um, finally, PURC orders 10% reduction of water tariffs, Ghana Water Company Limited to pay compensation. So that's what we have also contained this morning online at uh, citynewsroom.com. Now we we'll just go straight to introducing our guest for today. Uh, we have indeed been joined by Kamal Dean Abdullahi, he's a former Nasara coordinator of the NPP. Good morning and welcome to Breakfast Daily. Good morning, Isaac. Hmm. It's, it's, it's an honor to have you. Wow. Yes. Yes, I don't want to mention where I saw you the last time. <laughs> it's been a long while, yes. I've been seeing you at City TV. Hmm. I don't want to mention where I saw it the last time. <laughs> it's been a long while. I think that's what that, that's where the focus is right now. Uh, we have also yeah, been joined by. But you guys have been doing well. Mm. Thank a you. great compliment you have. I mean, yeah. I've been listening to you and been watching, and this appears these thought-provoking questions mm. coming out from Thank you very TV much. and Thank shaping you. our lives out there. Mm. Um, one must always be supportive of same. Thank you. Yeah, we, we, we compliment each other. I keep the short hair, she keeps the... Trust me, trust me. The seven up. Compliment, yeah. Yeah. I only hope it's only for TV purposes. We have research here at City FM and City TV. Good morning, Kudu. Good morning, Jifa. How are you? I'm well. I remember the last time I saw you. Really? And I can see <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Oh, we're here to in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're oh, eating yeah. some solid rice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there must be solid <laughs> So we'll just jump on to our first story. But remember that uh, viewers at home, you can also join us with the hashtag Breakfast Daily on all social media platforms. And of course, the what's up line? 0550-585-832. Now, yeah, the first story. Mm -hmm. From citynewsroom.com, PURC orders 10% reduction of water tariffs. Ghana Water Company Limited to pay compensation. And uh, the story has it here that the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, has ordered 10.08% 10 10 tariff reduction on um, prevailing water rates for all customers of the Ghana Water Company Limited. And also the order, or also, yeah, the order follows the Ghana Water Company Limited's non-compliance with tariff decisions and regulatory directives concerning the Tishi desalination Plant. There's also a similar story in uh, the Gold Street business. That's the yes, same. the Gold Street business says PURC penalizes GWLCL uh, orders repayment of 14 million Ghana cities to consumers. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission has directed the Ghana Water Company Limited to pay a total of over 14 million Ghana cities to customers for floating Section 11 of the PURC Act 1997 Act. 538. Um, the PU 
RC has also requested the Ghana Water Company Limited to effect an 10.8% 10 .8 reduction in tariffs on prevailing rates for all customers effective September 16, 2018. So let's get your thoughts on Ikuf, Ikuf, uh, Kujo first. Um, um, I, I think that it's taking the PRC some time to do this because of the various factors involved in this particular project. Um, if you look at how they set tariffs for water, they take all the plants of the Ghana Water Company, they take their individual tariffs and then they'll do their compounded tariff and mm. have an average for all of us. Now, if you look at the history of this Bifisa water treatment plant, it's a reverse osmosis plant, which was inaugurated sometime in 2015. Mm -hmm. The whole project started in 2012 to um, treat seawater. So they'll take about 140,000 cubic meters of seawater, and then the end result will be treatment of about 60,000 cubic meters of water per day for the people around Tishi because of water issues we had. Now, if you look at the Ghana Water Company, they have the Pong treatment plants, they have the Wager treatment plants, mm -hmm. They have the treatment plants around and so on. So these are the key treatment plants that feed our catchment area. But Teshi and the environs were cut mm -hmm. off. And the basic thing that came to mind then was that we have the seawater. Why not treat it to feed um, this particular population? But the thing is, desalination is a very expensive job. So we signed a deal. The whole construction cost about $125 million dollars. The multilateral investment agency of the World Bank, MEGA, gave a guarantee of $179 million for this to be a design, build, operate, and transfer project. So Bifisa and their partners, there is HydroCore, there are other agencies involved in this. Abengua, mm -hmm. they were to build this, operate it for 25 years, and then transfer to Ghana. Now, whilst they operate this for 25 years, Ghana Water Company will offtake or buy water from them at a certain tariff, which was higher than the regular tariff that Ghana Water was getting from their own plants. Along the line, there were controversies around this particular project because Ghana Water claimed that the cost of buying the water was higher than the cost of selling the water. Mm. So in buying water from Bifisa, they were actually running at a loss, at a loss yeah. in distributing water from Bifisa. So it went on and on, and it emerged that electricity cost, running cost, was breaking Ghana Water's finances. So they said we were going to take over the plant. I don't know how we tweaked the contract and renegotiated for Ghana Water to take over a 25-year-old BOT agreement. That I don't know yet. But then when they decided to take over the plant, mm -hmm. in the consolidated tariffs that PURC works for us to pay water bills, the cost of Bifisa was input in that tariff. But some way, somehow, Ghana Water is not operationalizing the plant to produce the 60,000 cubic liters of water to sell in the area. So the operation cost and all the other variables that PRC considered in agreeing the general tariff for water was not being affected because Ghana Water was not operating the plant. So the PRC has decided that we factored in Bifisa into the general tariff because you said we were going to take over the plant, but you are not operationalizing it. So it doesn't make sense that we make you take that tariff. So reimburse customers who have had to pay for the cost of this mm. and have not benefited. And the cost is transferred to all customers across the country because it's a consolidated tariff. So all plants around the country, the costs are put together to do this. Now, it is key that this has happened because customers are paying for this. It is also key that we look at the FISA conversation in general because there are capacity costs that whatever we do, the people of Ghana are going to bear. If the plant is not producing and it's sitting down, somebody has invested $125 million, there's an insurance cover of $179 million. It's a cost that must be paid because an agreement has been signed for a 25-year concession. So beyond this PRC directive, the key question for me is, how is Ghana Water and the various partners involved going to ensure that whatever it is, the FISA plant is run or not? 
whether we are going to run it or not, how are we going to meet the contractual obligations signed between uh, Abengua, Hydrocore, and the various partners that form Bifisa? It's, 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 it's similar to what is happening with any of the power plants. You bring a power plant in, there are tariffs, um, capacity charges, and everything agreed on. If you say that the power plant, you are going to take over the power plant based on whatever review of the agreement, and PRC adds that to the general tariff consideration, mm -hmm. and then in the end, let's say ECG takes over car power and they are not running it yet, the, the yeah, car power costs cost. were yeah. input into the tariff, then consumers have to be reimbursed. So the PRC has been very firm, and I think this is the first time something like this is happening. I'm now waiting for the Ghana Water Company to tell us how they are going to go forward with this, and the various partners involved, BFISA, Ministry of Finance, Ghana Water, and the various agencies involved, how we are going to resolve this whole thing. Because whatever the case is, there will be a debt that we are incurring, whether it will end up being judgment debt, whatever it is, it is an issue that needs total resolution beyond this directive by PRC. PRC is doing what they must do for the consumer, consumer protection. But beyond PRC's consumer protection, what are we going to do to ensure that this 25-year concession, which began in 2015, we are going to meet the terms and not have to end up incurring any um, judgment debt? That's the bigger question for me. Interesting. Well, interesting. Quality. From Akutu's point of um, view, and um, from what I pick, um, or what I pick from his submission, I ask a simple question. Do we think for Ghana at all? It appears all the narrative he's given us, okay, the background he's given us tells us that we didn't do proper thinking before going into this desalination um, plant. And I ask a fundamental question. Looking at the geographical position of our country, do we actually need a desalination plant? No. If we so. take good care of our water bodies, I'm not sure. Just behind us here, go to Wager. The dump is there. Source of water, portable water for inhabitants of Accra. And that's a fact. We've had a president who's come to say that look, the galam say that we do goes to get our water bodies affected. Hence, getting portable water to drink or a source of portable water would be difficult. Okay, it means that if hitherto we had actually done a good job, we would not have ourselves to blame in terms of not getting I mean, water and all that. We will surely have source of water. My point here is that if we had done proper thinking, we wouldn't be shortchanging customers, okay, via tariffs or through tariffs. That's what it means. PRC says, look, you are paying for what you don't even get. That's what it means. The order coming from PRC, the breach that has been cited, section 11 of mm -hmm. the Act, mm -hmm. tells us that, look, I am paying for what I am not getting. If there's no, if the plant is not in operation, mm -hmm. and you are charging me for what is supposed to be coming from the plant, <laughs> of course, what, 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 what are you doing to me? So PRC comes up to say, look, let's protect the consumer. Ghana Water refund over 14 million Ghana cities, which we believe you have taken already. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yet, the person who paid for it didn't get what he or she wanted. I think the system is beginning to work. Not to sound a bit political, but of course, um, uh, uh, I believe... At any given time, when something goes wrong, the one in the driver's seat is the one we're going to blame. Obviously, when it goes right, we should also give credit to them. I believe that if PRC is working today, if indeed the, 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 the system we have today put in place to serve as a check, okay, between the operator and then the consumer, or mm. between Ghana Water and the consumer, and indeed they come out to say, look, this is what is happening, and we are not enthused about it, we think that it should be withdrawn and we believe that compensation or payment or refund be given back to if you like the consumers okay. that's that's a great one but let's remind ourselves eight years of the ndc mm. of course i've checked we never had a single day where we had water tariff if you like reduced <coughs> no it never happened 
eight years, we never had a single day where electricity bill or bills meant for electricity got reduced. No. Okay. At least last year. It's it's, it's interesting. All, yes. it's, it's interesting that you want to sound political. No, I'm not sounding political. I'm only no, saying I'm, that I'm only wondering. I'm only wondering because in July 2018, sorry, in July 2018, there was you know the head of. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm even surprised that you want to even sound political because the the, the appointment of Clifford Brimer was in 2017 mm -hmm. under the NPP. Yeah. And then he is the MD of Ghana Water sure. Company Limited. And then in July 2018, PRC gave a directive for a reduction or at least you should cease charging Ghanaians for what you are not doing. The desalination plant is yeah. not working. So stop charging Ghanaians. And this order was clearly ignored. That was brought us to this point of 10% reduction. Mm -hmm. So if we are going to sound political, then we'll say that an appointment of Clifford Reimer and also the board, maybe, may, let's not even get I, to the I, board I, I'm not level. sounding political. Okay. And even if I'm sounding political, I am making statements of facts here. Yes, whether or not the order came and it was ignored, where are we today? The order has come for you to refund whatever you did. It means that punitive measures have been taken. It also, again, goes to mean that, yes, indeed, the watchdog rule we've given to PURC, per our laws in this country, is actually going to work, or is working. And okay. what happens to, right. what, what, to, what happens have, to have the person to, who flouted the law, who decided, you know what, even though PRC is saying we should we should not charge anymore, I'm going to continue charging the next Isaac, Isaac, is Isaac is let, 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 me, let me come mm -hmm. in here a bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, in January this year, I remember, um, Stanley Mate, who speaks for the Ghana Water Company, confirmed to us on the City Breakfast Show mm -hmm. that the FISA desalination plant had been shut down. They were mm -hmm. stopping operations, so they renegotiate the contract. Mm -hmm. That was something that was made clear to us. And we've moved from January to September. I, I, I want to assume that whoever is helping with the re renegotiation or whichever agencies are doing their work because it's been nine months of mm -hmm. renegotiations. The amount involved is quite huge. The mm -hmm. contract term is quite long. But whatever the thing is, to me, whether it's NBC now or MPP now, the end loser not the end user mm -hmm. it's the people of ghana of course yeah that's true and i believe that this current government's um ministry or agency overlooking some of these things is ministry of water resources works and housing yeah. and we've got the ministry of finance which is also key mm -hmm. in this because it's a huge financial now, transaction. Of water is sanitation yes mm -hmm. yes it falls under yeah, 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 yes and then we have the ministry of finance which is key in this because it involves a huge tra uh, financial transaction we must speed up processes if indeed the renegotiation is going on as we were told mm -hmm. you must speed it up whatever variables we need to look at we must look at those because the thing is the ecg concession is kicking in once it kicks in the concessionaire would also make their proposals for tariff reviews mm -hmm. now the mm -hmm. already existing uh, um, ipps and the players in the power sector gridco we are told gridco's debt is increasing we are told VRE debt to Ghana gas is increasing. Mm -hmm. We issued an energy sector uh, levies act bond. and the bond. You understand? And all these things are tied. So whatever it is, is going to add onto the desktop of Ghana. How we manage the energy sector and how we manage the utilities sector. So by 2019, by this time 2019, I'm sure new uh, levies would have kicked in. And the mm -hmm. PRC will be considering all these factors. So the ministry, the ministries involved, the agencies involved, must really get their technocrats and their experts and bring the partners at the table. Abengua, which is a Spanish company, Sojis, which is a Japanese company, which deals in rare metals. They hold about 94% of the equity. And the Ghanaian counterparts, Hydrocore and I think Dave Investments or something, I'll get the actual name. They must all get to the table and discuss this and know the way forward. Because after reading the total project documents for Bifisa, there were so many other things aside water that we could get from Bifisa. One of the key things that we intended to get from Bifisa was salt, salt. production. Mm. Because if you are desalinating water and doing it's reverse osmosis, salt is one of the main byproducts of this yeah, process. And salt, salt is key in our attaining of our um, petroleum hub objectives or the vision to make thermal petrol because salt is one of the key things used in the petrochemical industry 
Nigeria imports a lot of salt. Other countries in, import a lot of salt. We want to go beyond aid. So is there an opportunity to use Bifisa to grow a new That's industry? Sure because we have a salt industry which is struggling. Mm. So I feel that forget the politics. Let the technocrats sit at the table. Mm. Let them agree on what to do. Because at the moment, the Teshi area is not getting water seven days a week. They used to get water seven days a week from the desalination plant. They are not getting water seven days a week. Water from Pong and Wager, which is pumped to the other areas, mm -hmm. are also channeled to these areas. And we are water, our, 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 our water resources are reducing because there is encroachment at Wager. There is still the effects of Galamse we are dealing with. Recently, Ghana Water had to close a water treatment plant at Tosino. So it's a bigger conversation. So let's protect the resources. Let's protect this contract, hmm. whatever it is that we can renegotiate and bring better gains to the people of Ghana. Let's do that so that going forward, we all win or else we are going to play politics. NDC is going to do their you regular see? thing. NPP may do okay. their regular thing hmm. and we may not get to the bottom of this. But I know there are technocrats within the NDC who oversaw the signing of this contract and there are again. technocrats within the NPP. I think that some, when some of these things come up, hmm. we should pull our resources together. The interest of Ghana should be sought. Mm. We can we can play the blame game, but consistently we've been playing the blame game and not getting to the bottom of issues. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I feel that that's 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 where we should be channeling our okay. energy. We should be shifting the contract I'll, I'll, I'll come inside, and, but and then then what is due Ghana? Very well, very well. Very well. Very well. Is he he's proposing a dialogue, mm -hmm. a roundtable discussion, the way forward? Let's look at it. I mean, don't you think that should have proceeded where we are today? Mm -hmm. That's why I said that we refused to think in the first place before coming out with this plant. He talks about petrochemical industries looking for salt and looking for other things, which will also be a byproduct that we may be getting from this desalination, if you like, um, plant and all that. But where are we today? We are told that operations mm -hmm. actually is not seen or it has been shut down, as it were. Then. If that has been shut down, then we're talking about technocrats coming sit down, a roundtable discussion, have a discussion, determine the way forward for us. I, that's why I keep saying that, look, yes, we will, not, we will not do politics with this, but I'm saying that at the point of initiating what we believe or what we all believe that is going to inure to our benefit, that all these, if you like, um, angles or elements that you've mentioned ought to have been looked at thoroughly before we even implement it. So we'll not have a situation where we get to a point where uh, Ghana Water will say, no, it's expensive even getting water from them before transferring or selling it to the customers okay. and all that. I thought proper thinking should have actually gone yeah. into it. Fantastic. And that is why some of us will raise red flags at the point. Okay. And if you are not careful, you will then say we have been politicized. And, and I so thank you. If I can we do, do a quick have to go for a quick okay. break. Okay. And then when we, we come back, back okay. you, you can <laughs> continue. We, we are agree. discussing uh, PURC uh, penalizing the Ghana Water Company Limited. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. News review continues. We'll be right back. <laughs> For regular news checks as they unfold, 2020 News, all day, all the time. Politics, sports, entertainment, business, and more. 2020 News, we bring you the world in 20 minutes. And that's all the news in 20 minutes. Live music, interviews, poetry, and more with your favorite personalities. Be our guest on Saturdays from 2 to 4 p.m. for the most exciting moments on TV. Join Kojoa Kotobuateng for real entertainment right in your living room. Saturday Live on City TV and City 97.3 FM.
Okay, welcome back to Breakfast Daily and it's still the, the news review segment for today. Still joined by Kamal Dean Abdullahi, he's a former uh, national Nasara coordinator for the NPP and also Kujia Kutubati, who's the head of research here at City TV and City FM. Yes. Um, before the break, we were discussing PURC penalizing the Ghana Water Company Limited. You heard their thoughts on it. Now, let's talk about the bauxite deal. Wow. Yesterday, we had a, an event uh, after China, What's Next? And we had some pretty solid intellectuals as well as the Honorable uh, Information Minister designate Kojo Ponin Koma. Now, the headline uh, from CC News Show said, Bauxite deal old fashioned model of exporting raw materials. That's coming from Dr. Graham. So Dr. Yao Graham has cautioned governments against rushing into agreements with powerful nations such as China that will lead Ghana's raw materials being exported. So uh, at the event, he said this, and I'm quoting him, what that worries me. It worries me because it's in this discussion, I don't get the sense of uh, nature of transformational agenda that we have and how the Chinese connection fits in. I think we're too focused on only the commodity export in exchange for Chinese finance. For example, to agriculture, if you're going to collect more tractors and come and use them in a certain agriculture system, which in my view has a lot of problems that needs to be solved, the machinery may not w be terribly useful. The framework that the minister set is an old modeled framework. So what he's saying pretty much is that, and he was one of the panelists, but basically in our dealings with the world and with China, if we're trading bauxite for development, infrastructure work, then really how different is that from what we've been doing all along where we are leveraging on our raw materials alone versus looking at China as a market right, and saying perhaps if, and one of the panelists made this example of Chinese like spicy food. So if shito is what we can do, why don't we export our shito there and also see China as a market? Because they are coming in, they have their vision and their goals and what they want to achieve, which the Honorable um, Information Minister designate confirmed that China is looking to one, they're looking for markets to, 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 to set up their infrastructure projects, and two, they're looking for raw materials, which we have. But what is Ghana's national interest in all of this and how do we ensure that immediate national interest trap, is how we can bridge the gap okay in terms of um deficits of infrastructure you know uh, development mm -hmm. you would agree with me that um if we allow ourselves to go into if you like once again let me use my phrase proper thinking you would agree with me that yes every year a country like ghana suffers a deficit of over two billion dollars in infrastructure development mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. we do have this yet a country like ghana has some raw material certain there which we haven't even tapped in mm -hmm. now the argument of we having to have mined our own bauxite mm -hmm. get the aluminium or whatever refine whatever we have then they sell the commodity out then get our money decide which kind of which kind of infrastructure we would like to have and all that would be coming from someone then the other argument is that look we've been having this for so many years we've attempted to say okay let's give concessions to individuals or some companies to go into it they go bring expatriates to help their mind seem then they sell it out then it goes to benefit that single company or that single individual government of the day says look this is what we have as natural resources can we leverage this can we use this okay pragmatically to ensure that we reduce the deficit in terms of the infrastructure development that we do have which the mpp is doing i think that has that's what gave birth to the sino hydro you know um deal i am for it because yes we would have challenges we would have um you know people also holding back to say no we shouldn't have gone that way but are we actually going to have something in return mm. do we are we going to benefit as a nation i'm imagining the tamale interchange which is going to be a huge project which we never thought we're going to have as a region coming out of the sino hydrogel 
I'm imagining the roads in um, Sunyani, the inner roads, uh, town roads, going to be developed. I'm imagining the Ekufi project that is coming out of the Sino Hydro. I'm imagining a whole lot of projects that will actually be coming out should this deal materialize. So point is that, even though, yes, somebody will say we would have gotten more than we're going to get from this deal, but still, there's something to benefit from it. Okay, come on. Now let there's me, something to benefit. Let me yes. share a quote with you yeah. that um, um, Dr. Lloyd Amwar shared mm -hmm. with us yesterday. He said, on the whole, mm -hmm. China's Chinese policy in Africa has resulted from the diplomatic initiative of the People's Republic of China yeah. rather than the African states themselves. And he was quoting the Nigerian Alaba Ogusanwo mm -hmm. in 1974. So it's one thing for the Chinese to say, we've developed, we've industrialized, yeah. and now we need markets to, 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 to sell to. Mm -hmm. So let's identify African markets where we can sell infrastructure projects to. That's one thing. Yeah. They are coming to you. Sure. They need your market to sure. sell something. Sure. And a completely different thing for African nations to say, these are our top priorities right now. Mm -hmm. As it stands, we've been talking about industrialization since our early days yeah. of independence. We've not achieved it. We said we're going to have an economy driven by production instead of taxation. We've not achieved it. Mm -hmm. So this is what we need to do. So we're going to the Chinese to tick off these boxes, whether yeah. it's at least exporting um, shito yeah. or exporting or something. something that we know what that would also need every China. single year we at least see the big population in China and we're moving there and we're seeing that place as a market. Or two, let's get more Ghanaians to go to China, learn from how they've industrialized yeah. so that five, ten years from now, when we are also embarking on our industrialization agenda, we know what to do. Because if that's not the case, really, What's the difference between our engagement with China now and our engagement yes. with the, our former yes. colonial masters and the Bretton Woods Foundations, yes. for example? Let me let me just yeah. uh, complete my my, yeah, okay. my question. Where we just had a transaction with them, they come in, we give them our raw materials, they take something. 10, 20, 30 years, we don't know what became of it. I can name the gold, what we've done with gold, what we've done with cocoa. Yes, they came in, they set up infrastructure projects, but sometimes when they leave, we can't even manage these things because perhaps sure. it was not our idea to begin with. Uh, you see, Jifa, we've come a long way since independence 1957 till date. I'm not sure it's the first time we're going to have a relationship, some sort of relationship with China. Mm -hmm. We've had a series of relationships with them. Yes, that is why the government of the day, speaking specifically to this Sino Hydro deal, mm. thought it wise to say, let's put together a team of risk management. Okay? Specifically for this, people have raised concerns. In the past, how were we treated by the Chinese who are looking for market for their um, industrialized state, I mean, country already? The infrastructure they have to sell and whatever. Okay. What are we also going to give to them? That's where your question comes in. To be able to get whatever they want. You see, let's not pretend. Fact is that, are we a developing country? Yes. Is the Chinese? Yes, some quarters will say they are still a developing nation. Some quarters will say they are beyond a developing nation. Mm -hmm. But let's agree. Where they are, what's the such school? Is the Chinese better off than Ghana? I mean, are they a bit higher than us in terms of industrialization? That is a fact. And in fact, they are even more or less deemed to be more like a, a developed nation. So if they have what we do not have, and of course they've advanced a bit than us, it is just, it sounds to reason that look, at a point in time, we just have to ensure that we come together to understand each other. And of course, give something, I mean, um, um, in exchange for what they have and then for what we also have. Mm -hmm. Basically, there'll be an agreement at a point we, 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 we mention it. But we want to say that, look, Ghana must benefit in full. I'm not saying we shouldn't benefit. We have to. But it is a going concern. You would agree with me that somewhere in the 60s, when we had maybe, say, 400, 500, 600 doctors, I don't really have the figures. Mm -hmm. Today, we may not be the same case. We have or about 3,000 3, doctors. 3, doctors. Mm -hmm. We are also on the go in yeah. terms of development. Mm -hmm. But where we are today if we say 
we cannot mine our bauxite. We don't have what it takes. We need a strategic investor to come on board. We need someone to help us out to be able to get the bauxite metamorphosed into aluminium so we can sell it out. And we do not have the money to do it. Mm. Sit there, we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the equipment to do it. Someone has the equipment and says, look, let me come help you. Let's mine it, sell it, but give me back the money to this wet. Then also I'll give you in return some infrastructure development for you to move. I think it's a good start, even though holistically speaking, I wouldn't say it's too good or it's largely 100% um, for Ghana. Okay. Obviously, we have some. Right, my last question for you before Kojo comes in here, really, is um, let's. I'm, I'm losing my train yeah, of thought here. Let's let's look at the way the, the doctor example you made. Okay. We got a lot of doctors trained in Cuba, for mm -hmm. example. We said, mm -hmm. okay, this is how Cuba has able to sustain itself in, in the medical space. Yeah. So let's train doctors, come back, and let them benefit us as a nation. Mm -hmm. So are we saying that perhaps in the early days of independence, we were at the same stage of development with the Chinese? The, Chinese. the gap was not this big, no. right? So why aren't we asking, rather, what did the Chinese do to get to where they are? Are we also, in our relation with them, are we also doing the same thing so that we ensure that 20 years from now, it's not another developing country that has developed that is looking at us? Yeah. Because every nation looks at Africa as a market to sell its I goods. Agree. When is Africa also going to start seeing other nations as a market to sell its goods? I can mention Agua, for example. Mm -hmm. we, we, we renewed it for 10 years. We've not heard much of it other acts similar to it we've not done much with it so how does this fit in our long-term development plan as a nation before Kojo comes in briefly no I, I I think our attitude is one secondly we should also look at our form of education how do we educate the populace what do we focus on mm. in China for example they focus on what we call the stem science technology engineering and mathematics Maybe that's the foundation they gave to themselves. What is our foundation? Okay, how well are we actually giving credence to this term that I've mentioned? So that at least if we're able to churn out much more engineers in the system, mm -hmm. we're able to depend on technocrats rather than doing so much politics, like um, Akutu mentioned earlier on. Mm -hmm. You realize that we have a system where polarization has taken over everything. We polarize the entire system. Question is, in China, do we see polarization? What betrays you when you go even sit somewhere and then want to think of um, governance administration and all that try to chastise your the communist you know um, rule? You are going to have problems. But here we have adopted a system where we've allowed ourselves to be so much polarized. And again, our educational the foundation that we give to our young ones coming up indeed doesn't also see engineering and science and technology giving a boost. I believe that we should start thinking about it. Again, we write so many papers, so many articles. We come up with all this, we don't implement. All these professors that we do have, let me tell you, with all respect to them. Okay. We have but really all, briefly, really yeah, briefly, briefly. We have yeah. all these professors have there. Papers have been changed, now, papers have been written, but implementation is a problem. Okay. So please, I think that going forward as a country or as a developing country, we should give credence to STEM, give credence to technology, then we'll be able to. Wonderful. Kamal yeah. um, talked about science yeah. STEM. Right, STEM yeah. is not unique to China. No. We had Kwame yeah. Kwame University of Science and Technology mm -hmm. decades ago. So yeah. clearly in our there, development yeah. stages, respectfully, <laughs> the vision we had Humanities was to so one, industrialize, yeah. have an agricultural mm -hmm. revolution. In the early days of independence, our plan was no different from these Asian countries. Yeah. Where did we go wrong? And why are we now talking about Sino-Hydro with, with a country that we should actually be trading with as equal partners mm. in this stage of our development? I think, I think it was basically about implementation of the plans. Um, we've had some really great plans and uh, we mm -hmm. really didn't implement them very well. So we need to revisit our execution strategies. We are great at planning, but we are not too good when it comes to execution. So we need to revisit that. Now, having said that, so you've mentioned independence and all those things. So let's, let me take us back. The first major loan in Ghana as a country was from the World Bank. Mm -hmm. Do you know what we used it for? What? For the Akusombo Dam. Yeah. And the major consideration, economic consideration made for that Akusombo Dam was not just to power Ghana and give us electricity, but also power Valco. Yeah. And what was Valco's role? An aluminum company. What do we use in getting aluminum 
bauxite. So there is a history of bauxite in our core economic commodity story as a country. So one would one would think that um, from that time all the way to now, we should would have learned that. some lessons and also um, built our capacity in the bauxite value chain so that Ghana would get a lot more. Same for cocoa, same for most of the commodities. But having said that, it will be interesting to see the full document on this $2 billion barter. Mm -hmm. It's not a loan, right? No, yeah, it's a barter. Okay. It's a barter, it's not a loan. So it will be interesting to see the full document on this $2 billion barter agreement to sino hydro to be interesting to see the costs that will go into building the refinery mm -hmm. the bauxite refinery because we are not going to give them the raw bauxite we are giving them alumina mm -hmm. which is value addition so it will be interesting to see the cost that will go into setting up the refinery the operation cost of that particular unit electricity because electricity is key in refining bauxite and we know that our bauxite is such that it would need it's 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 a good grade but it's not the highest grade so we need a lot more a little yeah. bit more electricity yeah. to refine we are also told that if you if you listen to the figures that the senior minister and the vice president have mentioned as to the bauxite deposits mm -hmm. it gives us an indication that we have 25 percent of the world's bauxite deposits mm -hmm. if you go per those figures is that really the case mm. are we not overestimating do we have the right estimate of the bauxite I don't want to talk about the ecological campaign being made against mining in Etiwa in Nyinahini. But granted that we are mining bauxite in Etiwa in Nyinahini, have we done a proper analysis to ensure that we have the right deposits of bauxite? The two billion, is everything going into the infrastructure? And if everything is going into the infrastructure, what is going into the plant that will refine the alumina? Because we are told that the Chinese are just off-taking alumina from us. Are they going to build the alumina as part of the two billion dollar or is that going to be a separate thing i just feel that the government owes Ghanaians a total document that tells us all these things and then the power needs we are adding on to our power generation but how much electricity is is is, is, is going to be required for this because one of the biggest challenges that vaco has faced over the past few decades been has been electricity yeah. that's how come They've had to reduce their production levels to the bare minimum so that um, they don't take the whole nation's electricity to produce aluminium. Mm -hmm. So all those are questions. So if the government gave us a document, the master document as to how we are going to do with this, all the variables considered, it will give skeptics like me Confident. a better understanding of how we are going through this. Aside that, I think that our approach to infrastructure is totally wrong as a country. Really? Yes, really. But PDP for now. Right? Yes, because mm -hmm. the main elements for infrastructure development, we have them here, and we can nationalize them. We own them. I've made this point on radio. I'm making it on TV. If it's road, you need the aggregates, sandstone. Mm -hmm. You need the yeah. technical know-how. We have all these three. So you may need plants and equipment, which we could procure as a country mm -hmm. and have a plants pool for some of these things. I think we should really look at how to cut down on the costs on us in entering some of these things because if i had a farm and i had vegetables and everything and i needed food to eat i'm not going to contract isaac to come and get the vegetables and everything for my when the key things i need are the utensils with which to cook and i have the skill to cook too mm. and i'm the hungry person mm. so i just feel that okay. we need to have a national conversation mm. about infrastructure the cost because it's outrageous yeah the unit cost per road houses everything infrastructure in ghana is higher than in our sub-region okay. how come when you have some of the finest um, technocrats mm. when we have abundance labor mm. and technical expertise when you okay. have abundance of material which are the some of the key components Very so well. those are the things i i, I so okay. the bigger sino hydro deal is there let's mm. have the master agreement Fantastic. let's also know the key thing going into mm. that and let's also have a better conversation about providing uh -huh. infrastructure which is not going to bring all these um, 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 um debts okay and saddle us with so much uncertainty going forward okay if, we, if we did that maybe we will not have to go to china for all these wonderful things. very grateful i think i like now, this I to, of, um, no no i'll just okay. to talk about uh, the final story for today uh, i'm not undermining the auditor general this is coming from the board chairman now 
Uh, we, we, we know the back and forth going on in current time between uh, the Auditor General Daniel uh, Yao Domelevo and, of course, the board chair. So the story I'm reading from citynewsroom.com says the chairman of the Audit Service Board, Professor Edward Duyajiman, has denied allegations that he is interfering with the work of the Auditor General. Now, the Auditor General, we know, petitioned the president accusing uh, Professor Duyajiman of unlawfully interfering and violating the mandate of the auditor of him being in the capacity of the auditor general and um so his letter is dated 27 july to the president and subsequently the 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 the, the board chair also petitioned the president that um, the auditor general is not following instructions or something of the sort he says i've explained the circumstance surrounding all um the concerns he has raised and nobody will undermine the auditor general for anything but earlier we we saw instances where the auditor general actually come out to say that you know what my work is, is being interfered with unlawfully. So let me just take your let me begin briefly by saying that the audit service board is mandated to be in place by the constitution of Ghana. Mm. The auditor general, we are mandated to have him by the constitution of Ghana. Mm. We take Article One Eight Seven mm. where we must have an auditor general in place mm. to take care of our physical you know, environment in terms mm -hmm. of auditing and all that. Then you come down to Article 188 where we talk about an audit service board which is be supposed to be in place with institutional representation. Mm. You see, this impasse, when I read about it, I was like, ah, if you read through the constitution, this guy has security of tenor. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the auditor general. Mm -hmm. However, if you read through what applies to the audit service board they do not because it's within the discretion of the president to decide whether i have justification to remove you or not to remove you and also to appoint you as it were but once the other general is appointed mm -hmm. i think it's with, with recourse to article 146 that you can remove him from office yes. you get that yeah. now somebody says that okay once somebody may argue that once i have security of tenor okay and i'm comfortable I can still come out to complain and the world will see me as if you like the person who is right mm -hmm. there's another person says that, okay because the board can be removed easily that is why maybe the auditor general is coming to complain about them so that the president actually would have cause to say well, if this is happening let me change the board or let me try to reconstitute the board and as mm -hmm. it were i think i'm raising this because politics once again goes into some of these things mm -hmm we political commentators you may hear kamal saying something in favor of maybe say the other service board mm -hmm. then you may hear another political commentator somewhere okay saying something in mm -hmm. favor of the auditor general still trying to fuel this impasse mm -hmm. between us i'm happy the line the auditor general has told by writing to the presidency to look into the matter mm -hmm. then again the board chair also came up to say i also have my side of the story um, I got the impression that the presidency is looking at getting a committee in place to, mm. as it were, understand what exactly is happening at the um, audit, audit okay. general's um, outfit and also um, within the audit service board. Um, the earlier we solve it, the better. Okay. It uh, is very important. It's, 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 it's an institution we must not see, you know, wobbling or struggling mm. because if that surface we the people of ghana will suffer what is our financial administration going to look like how well are we going to get auditors working so well okay that is the concern I'm, i think um we should be um uh, looking at and that is something that will not in your to our benefit as a nation should we continue to to this tangent of having an impasse between the audit service board and the auditor general but clearly they should look into it well and then get the way forward for all of us okay Thank you. You. you know the past few days or, or weeks a lot mm -hmm. has been happening concerning the auditor generals or the audit service in the news yeah. i don't know if you got, you guys have paid attention mm -hmm. to stories that suggested that okay, auditor general blows seven million on cars yeah. without mm -hmm. going yeah. through the right yeah. and then the ppa mm -hmm. clarify certain issues to do with that particular procurement and everything and sometimes when people are at are, 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 are trying to do something to someone or an institution some of these things start coming up mm. 
and they, they they start putting them on front pages and and pushing a certain agenda like against the politics a, of it. yes against against someone but for me i feel that the audit service is key in our really? country key. and should be elevated beyond some of these petty fights mm. now i'm going to read something which h chrissy prempe the cdd boss shared on facebook yesterday mm -hmm. and i totally agree with him on that score. he says we must amend article 190 of the constitution to abolish the appointment of boards for non-commercial regulatory oversight or investigative bodies like the audit service bank of ghana ioko office of special prosecutor fda etc it is sufficient to require that such statutory bodies which need professional and operational autonomy to be effective in the execution of their special mandates make periodic reports to and be subject to the oversight powers of parliament in the same fashion as currently obtained for Shraj, the EC, NCCE and the Judicial Service. Mm. And I okay. totally and agree with this. Someone also argue that, you see, parliament per article 94 of the constitution hasn't got a definition per se as to who is qualified enough to be in parliament mm. you're talking about scrutiny in parliament I, sometimes you even get someone who I, is I, not i i, 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 I agree but with it's you but 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 it takes away the effectiveness no, of you the see, it, You see, I, 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 I think I'll, I'll just say, um, and, and we have run out of yes, time. But then like I would want we, we need to look at it critically. That we should do away with the and, boards. And, and, and stop playing say. some of these games within the, in, in well, the system. Well, the, the constitution <laughs> spells out clearly the role of the board. Yes, and the audit service act also spells yeah. out clearly the role of the board. Of the board. And in my appreciation of the law, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be administrative in nature. Mm -hmm. And not the 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 allegations that have been made against the board chair yeah. let me just quote this from um mr Dumelevo before we end mm -hmm. he says my investigations revealed that the audit service board chairman instructed mr johnson the deputy auditor general and mr ebenezer aglomasa um, a procurement officer to replace the approved firms with other firms of his choice this is this is an allegation from the Auditor General, and if that is indeed true, it goes against I think that's 187 plus mm -hmm. 7, yeah, yeah. which ensures that the Auditor General he should be independent and his work should not be interfered with by anybody. No, best corporate anybody practices in, even means yeah. that look, you the board deals with policy. That yeah, just, it should be straight the, the micromanaging of the do their yeah, done business with the exactly. So aspect. whether or not so, there is a board should not be a problem. Is yeah. that the, the 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 independence has been guaranteed by the Constitution and Absolutely. by the Parliamentary Act. Absolutely. So. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, Kamal Dean Abdullahi, he is the former NPP NASA National Coordinator. Thank you so much for and joining of course, us. Yes, we are hosting Abdullahi later on yes, the show. Yes, he's coming now, later. Now, let, let me give but you a 15 minutes with Abdullahi. Abdu was the first guest on okay. Saturday Live on radio. Wow. Oh, okay. And now okay. it's a TV show. Nice. <laughs> and in the next few weeks, she's going to be on the show as well to okay. promote. And she's Could fantastic. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Vaultic, we are more than just leaders in Ghana's drinking water industry. We are part of the society, refreshing the hardworking people of Ghana and keen contributor in adding value to the lives of the Ghanaian population nationwide. Voltic Ghana identified some key problems.